Hello everyone, today we'll set up Rayfire to work with the shooter and melee module. Rayfire gives the absolute best type of destruction you can have right now in Unity. Before we start I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So this is the scene I have for uh, for this tutorial. So we have a basic player with um, nothing on him, we have our plane and we have a camera motor as well with some um, basic settings. I'm doing um, orbit input with the middle mouse hold uh, just because it's a bit easier to demonstrate in this uh, in this video. I have a couple of objects here as you can see. Now th these two are just basic um, basic cubes so you know right click uh, 3D object cube and you know that's it. I've created these ones with uh, Pro Builder so really simple they're exactly the same size but you know as you can see by the parts they are actually hollow inside so there are uh, basically uh, six different objects and merged together as one with pro builder these um so that's these two these are uh, pretty much the same they just don't have a top and bottom and i have a completely different uh, cube inside so that's it now the reason I did that is because um, this, you know, this will basically represent a pillar with a outer layer you can destroy, which you often see in games, which is pretty cool. Um, if you want to know how to make this, literally it's just Pro Builder. It's, it will take you a couple of seconds. It's really simple. So that's it. Um, as you can see, none of these actually have um, mesh renderers, uh, mesh colliders. Only these ones because well, we're not actually using those. And the reason for that is that Rayfire does all of that um, in runtime. So that's pretty cool. So let's get started. And what I'm going to do is these first ones will be um, sliceable objects. So you can slice them um, with the sword. And the, lo the ones behind will be um, for the gun. So let's get started. And yeah, the, the reason I'm doing um, different objects for both is I want to show different types of destruction as well and how to use it with both the shooter module and melee module. So let's get started with these and these are, uh, you know, our sliceables. So we're going to add um, Rayfire Rigid. And this is basically the one script that will, uh, that will do it all. So pretty cool. So initialization, we're going to do at start. So from the start, um, everything will be added. So the collider, rigid body, etc. Simulation type, uh, dynamic, and we're going to do it in runtime. And yeah, we're not changing all that much with this one. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Now I want these objects to be a bit heavy. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, select the mouse by property, make it 50. Then I will change this to ice, as that is a uh, you know an easy to slice object. And one thing we are really changing here is solidity. So setting this to the maximum value will basically mean you can't simply shatter it, um, you know, like you normally would with a bullet. It won't shatter. You really need to slice these objects, and that's what solidity is for. So make sure slice by blade is turned on as well obviously quite important and um, we'll change depth as well to uh, to two and yeah that's it nothing else needs to be activated so no velocity no anything um, this is you know we're going to slice these ones now I'm going to copy this component select this one I'm going to paste the component on it um, because all of these will be the same and just the outer mesh on this one and there we go so all of them are the same and yeah that's uh, that's it now for the ones in the back we're going to add a new one so again at start runtime we'll keep this to concrete and the only thing we're changing is that um, how it is activated. So this will be activated by velocity. Um, you know, so it needs a, a certain velocity. 
um, simply put. And um, that's what will uh, we'll activate this. I'm, I'm not going to change anything else. These will be rather simple and straightforward. Copy. And oh, I guess I uh, still had one here. Um, paste. And paste as well. So yeah, these are, uh, these are all the same, the ones in the back and these in the front are all the same as well. But because they are different types of objects, you will see a different type of impact. Then next thing, we're going to set up the, uh, the player. So we are using both um, melee, so character melee, and shooter here and let's change this to combat and what I'll do for this is on key down with the Q I don't know why Q but we'll draw the gun and another trigger um, key down with the E will draw the sword or the gun, one of the two. I'll decide at the moment. And mouse down left will perform the, uh, the melee attack or shoot with our gun. We can use the same trigger for that actually, we don't need separate ones. So pretty cool. So the same button will draw an, an sheet or holster. So um, which one was this? I think this the first one was Q. So let's make that a gun. So shooter, if the player is armed, so if he's unarmed, so let me hit play mode for a moment. There we go, so that fixes the, uh, the name not being visible. So it's going to draw the weapon. And I'm just going to pick the, the default revolver here, um, which is this one. And else he's going to holster. I'm going to add ammo straight away as well, so give ammo and I'll give a thousand. And that needs to be the matching bullets as well. And I'm going to do, um, you know, aim in the same action. I know that's really a bit unconventional. I'm just, you know, it's not really the point here. We just want to see how it all works. And let's go over to the conditions for the sword. Um, so again, that's arms, but then from the melee. There we go, and we'll just pick the, oh, that's the wrong one, draw, um, so the default sword weapon, and we'll holster otherwise. And yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's all pretty straightforward. Now, one thing we are going to add, um, when it comes to the actions, so we have, um, you know, we'll uh, input melee or, um, you know, shoot. So that's with the left mouse button. And we're going to do something else. So let's go to preferences. And I already have it, but I'll remove it and uh, re add it again. So we are adding a variable. So a bool. We'll call this slicer. There we go. And that's what we're going to do here. So we'll basically turn that on. And I'll explain in a bit why we're doing this. So that's all set up. 
Now, next thing we need to do basically is set up. Well, with, let's start with the sword. Setting it up in such a way that it will just slice um, could be really easy actually. All you'd really need to do is add the um, um, blade, a ray fire blade, and you know, a mesh uh, collider, and you'd be done. And that's pretty much it. Now, I'm not going to do that because I don't want the sword to always cut. I only want the sword to cut when we actually perform a melee attack. Because if you by default would just add the blade component, then the blade will automatically be able to slice and you can literally walk next to those, um, those objects with the sword and it will slice them even without performing a melee attack, which is pretty lame. Um, so let's add a trigger here and this is tied to our variable change so that variable we just set up um, so slicer and we'll have some conditions now next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate our sword here let's drag that up and i'm going to call this slicer i'm going to add a mesh collider here um, which is convex and I'm going to turn off the actual mesh itself and now I'm going to add the blade component and we're going to do a enter exit so that's uh, an XZ and the reason for XZ is because um, you know by default the melee attack it slices um, horizontally and that's it, we don't need to uh, do anything else here. Now we do need to set up the conditions and basically what these conditions do. So, um, if the global variable slicer is true, then set active our slicer. So yes, that means we'll need to turn it off as well. Wait one second. and then we can uh, turn it off again and we'll also reset that bool and there we go so a bit of an explanation what we're doing here and oh let's make sure we have the L set as well um, which is basically just this one so the moment we input our melee attack, this bool will change and basically it's going to turn on our slicer which has the blade component um, with our collider here. And then after one second it will be turned off again. Now one second is just a, you know, an, an estimate, um, you can tweak this a bit to match your animations, but one second generally should be enough. And yeah, that's it. You know, that's literally um, all it's supposed to do. So let's give this a go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk to these objects. And as you can see, our blade does nothing. So nothing is happening, um, which is, you know, what it's supposed to do. And then if I perform a melee attack, it will actually slice. And I'm not sure if it does it a second time or not. Um, but yeah, you can basically have it infinitely sliced. That's, uh, you know, that's up to you. But keep performance in mind. So we have the same thing here. Um, which uh, obviously generates more pieces. And here as well. And yeah, you know, this is pretty cool. Um, and th that's a nice thing. Um, it only slices when we're actually performing melee. So, pretty awesome. Now let's set up our gun. And for the gun, we need to make a couple of changes actually to the default uh, revolver. So where is it? This is the default one. There we go. So the revolver itself is, uh, is absolutely fine. But we need to make some changes to the bullets. So right now the shoe type is set to sphere cost and 
that's something we're going to change so we're going to change it to projectile and yes we still need a projectile so let's create one and I'm going to make this 0 0.1 no 0 0.01 on all axis there we go so yes it's a really small bullet let's set all of this to uh, to zero and yeah it's a it's a really small object now what I need to add as well in order for this to actually have some uh, velocity is a rigid body let's do a mass of five and I'm going to turn off use gravity um, it will just go horizontally and the next thing we need to do is give this also a ray fire rigid. So where is it rigid? There we go. Um, this will also be a at start. Um, we can keep all of this off actually. This is completely fine. And what we need to do with the rest is the mass. So um, I'm going to increase that a bit. And other than that, we're uh, we're good. I'm not uh, changing anything else here. So let's rename this fair to uh, bullet. And I'm going to drop that in the prefabs of uh, of the shooter here. So there we go, bullet. And yeah, you can you know you can change the look of it, obviously. And there we go. So now in um, revolver, no, in bullet. Sorry. I'm going to increase the velocity as well because if you remember these are destroyed based on velocity so I'm going to increase that a bit and let's look up our bullet prefab and obviously you can use a different type of uh, um, you know prefab for that as well if you actually have some bullets or something like that and there we go so that's what we're using now And I mean, I think if I remember correctly, that's actually all we really need to do. So let's try it out. So I'm pressing Q here. Let's walk a bit closer. And yeah, that's it. Um, You know, maybe I should have done a bit more when it comes to the actual power of these uh, bullets. But, you know, as you can see, it fragments, it breaks. Now, the amount of um, fragmentation you can have are all things you can set up um, within uh, the Rayfire script. So there's tons of settings. I'm, uh, you know, I'm keeping it easy on purpose, but obviously there's a lot more you can do with it. Let's try this one. And did I actually add the script to this one? Oh yeah, I did. Guess it needed a bit more, a uh, bit more power. And obviously, you know, there will be settings you will need to uh, tweak. And that's it. You know, all working. Now, if I shoot on this one, um, you know, it will work as well. So nothing to worry about in that sense. You know, it will still all break. Um, but as you can see, you know, by uh, the frame rate going down, you'll need to tweak some of the uh, some of these settings in order for performance to be slightly better. Because um, yeah, you know, real time doing this will have some uh, performance impact. So that's really all there is to it. So you know, a couple of changes to make sure um, the blade actually makes sense. A couple of changes to the way the default gun is set up in the shooter module and you basically have um, Rayfire Destruction completely working with the Game Creator modules. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this. Rayfire is still on sale at the moment, so I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.